Hello dear friends, my name is Vangelis Prokopiou and you are watching simplifying nested if-else statements and guard clauses. Today we will uh, look into this topic. Uh, this is uh, basic uh, development stuff that every developer should uh, know and use. So I decided to make uh, a video about this topic. Uh, and share it with you. So let's get started. I have created uh, some code that will uh, be our testing code. I have created, uh, we're using Rust first of all, because why not? We love Rust. So I chose Rust for this example and probably most of the examples that I will be using in my videos. The setup is uh, that uh, we are uh, an insurance company, let's say, uh, about and we we are providing insurance about cars, and we have these specifications, which say that if the driver has more than ten years of experience, we give him a, a five percent discount. If he has more than 20 years of experience, we provide a 17% discount. If more than 25 years of experience and male driver, we provide a 20% uh, discount. And if 25 years uh, and female, we provide a 23% discount because we love women. So I have created uh, a get discount function which accepts the years of experience and the gender uh, and calculates uh, the final uh, discount that uh, we will get. This is the function. Uh, and here, down here, we have our specs in tests, of course, so that uh, uh, we are confident that our function, our get discount function, uh, is right and gives us the right result for each test case. So we can start by running the tests. So if we say cargo test, we will see that uh, we run our one test and it passed. So we know that this get discount function works OK. But as you can see, we have, uh, we have a, a structure here with uh, if and else statements. And we also have nested if else statements, of course. Uh, this this is not a problem for the computer itself because it can uh, compute uh, without uh, um, caring about the readability of this part of the code. But uh, we as humans, uh, we are really concerned about the, the readability and the ability to maintain long term this code. So this is not readable enough and we will try to refactor it to make it uh, more readable and more maintaina maintainable. So this is the scope of this video, how we can simplify the, these if-else statements and the nested if-else statements particularly, and also uh, take a look at the, the guard clauses and how we can use them. So let's start by using a guard clause because this is the first thing that we can do. So what is a guard clause? Now, if we see all our specs here, we see that we are starting to having discounts when uh, the years of experience are more than 10 years. So the first, the guard clause that we can use is that we can say that if <coughs> the years of experience are less than 11 years, then we will return zero as the discount. This is the guard clause, as they are called. And we are checking a very basic uh, branch 
of our code and we are returning immediately if this is valid. So if the experience is anything less la uh, than 11 years where we get the first discount, we will return zero and we will exit this function. So this one can become obsolete. Well, let's not care about what's happening what's happening down there. Let's revert the code as it was, okay? And we will start refactoring. So, the next thing we have to check is if the years of the ex experience are more than 25 and we have a nested if if else statement here too. So, we will start and we will say again if this is true and also if this is true in this case we will return the discount for this case but instead of using an else statement we will use a second if statement with the other branch and we will return the discount for this uh, branch of our code when the years of experience are more than 25 and the gender is female. You may think that this is not a great change but in terms of readability it's a lot more readable and uh, a lot more maintainable than these if-else uh, nested statements. So let's continue. Our next uh, spec specification if is if the years are more than 20. So we will copy this part of the code and we will say if the years of experience are more than 20 we will return 17% and uh, if the years of experience are more than 10 we will return we will return 5% discount So all this can go away now. Okay. As you can see, we have a check here which says that we have mismatched types expected i32 found uh, an empty expression. This is the return type that we should have i32, but since we don't have a final statement in our function, uh, the default value that gets returned is this and uh, of course this does not match our uh, function signature so we have to modify this and we will just get rid of this if uh, if branch the last if branch because we know that if any of the above statements is true we will get an early return so the code will never reach this final uh, part of the code but if nothing of the above is true we will just return this uh, this value so we have no mismatches and we have 
refactored our code, which in my opinion is a lot more readable. We will uh, run our tests now to see if indeed everything works as expected. We will run our tests and as you can see, let's re rerun the tests, the tests pass. So we have no errors and we will also commit our code nice this is nice so we can have a look at the at the both versions of the code this is the non refactored code and we will check out this commit and we will see the previous version of the code. As you can see we have a great difference in readability. This uh, version of the code needs in my opinion quite uh, an effort on the developer part in order to identify what's what is really going on here. But if we If we return to the refactored code, we will very easily identify what's going on uh, by having just straight plain if statements with uh, less branching and quite readable code. Now, uh, a point to address is the fact that uh, maybe some somebody will say that uh, in this case, when we have multiple if statements and not if else branches, uh, maybe the computation time is greater than in the case that we would have an if else uh, structure. But in this specific case, this is not true because we have return statements, so the uh, computation stops, for example, here. This will not be evaluated if this is true but even in the case that, that we did not have returns but we had uh, multiple if statements one after another and we just executed code uh, it is a lot preferable to have uh, maybe more compu computational uh, time or uh, to have uh, the computer spend more time executing the code uh, or evaluating the code but uh, we as developers and humans be able to read the code than the other way around so the readability of the code is a lot uh, more uh, serious and a priority than the computational time that this code will need of course this uh, may change if we have a very sensitive environment that we have to run our code uh, but in for the most part uh, the readability always must be a top priority compared to the computational needs of the code that we're going to execute uh, this was the video that I wanted to share with you I hope you find it useful um, I hope you use it in your own projects, these concepts. Uh, and if you like the video, you can uh, comment, like and subscribe. And keep coming back for more of these videos. Uh, this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. So I hope you're well and have a great day.